Hi there. Um, I wanted to make a quick video showcasing a new uh, development feature that I have been working on for the past uh, couple hours, really. Um, it's something that I thought of kind of a while ago, but I have not gotten a chance to implement it until tonight. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I've been working closely with Valve uh, for a while and helping out with developing um, the uh, SteamVR Skeletal API for Unity. Um, helping developers interpret the, uh, the crazy skeletal tracking data from SteamVR and uh, animate hands from it. Um, and it's still in a pretty early state, as you may know if you've used it, um, but this feature is a pretty nice one and it should help it be a lot more usable to, to more developers. Um, so what I've built is a, uh, a tool that helps you uh, kind of snap a hand to a predefined pose in the world um, generally, that's going to be holding on to something in a certain way. Um, so before, you had to create an animation in an outside tool, and then import that into Unity and make sure it lines up with your objects, and then you like pump it into your um, your animator controller for your hand, and then you know assign that when you grab onto stuff. And it was just kind of a nightmare. So this new way of doing it is um, is a lot better. Um, so I want to show you how this works by um, by implementing it for one of the weapons in Vertigo. Uh, Vertigo 2, because I have lots of weapons, and making animations for all the different poses that your hand could be on, on all those weapons, would just be a pain. Um, it is what I was doing before tonight, but now that I have developed this, I don't need to do that anymore. Um, so let's get started. I've done it for one gun already, I'm going to do it for a second gun in this video, so hopefully um, all goes smoothly. I will do it for the uh, revolver. We'll grab our revolver prefab. Yeah, so this is the really awkward way that I was doing it before. I actually put hand models on the, the gun prefab and then enabled them when you grab onto it and hide your real hands. That's just a mess for so many reasons. Like, what if I want to change something about your hand? I have to go through every gun prefab and change that. That's no good. So I'm going to delete these old uh, hand prefabs. So now we have a naked gun. Excellent. Um, I will grab my hand poser prefab and drag it onto here. So we'll start out with doing the uh, the main grip on the gun. So you can see I've color coded the hands. Um, disable the secondary pose. We've got orange for right hand, blue for left hand. Um, and I made it so you can copy the pose over, so we only have to do one at a time, which is pretty nice. So let's just disable the left hand um, and work with the right hand. So what we do is we go into here, and we can see it's shown us which one is the right hand. Very nice. Um, and then we actually just go and pose this this hand skeleton however we want it around the gun. So what I'll do is maybe you know Google search holding revolver because I don't know anything about guns, and I don't know how you're supposed to hold a revolver. And that's not a revolver. I know that much just look at like a natural-ish hand pose. I mean this isn't a real gun obviously, it's a made-up gun with bizarre proportions and it's kind of larger than normal also because it's, you know, it's a video game. Um, we will grab our thumb and rotate it around. I can grab onto the side of the gun. keep it vaguely within the realm of possibility. See, if you have a larger team, you could have your animator do this, um, or just anybody that actually knows how uh, hands work, which is not me. Despite working on uh, Knuckles content for the past while, I still have no idea how hands fit together. But I can just poke at it until it looks right. Grip around the trigger. Here's the problem with this comically large gun is that the finger barely reaches the trigger. Okay, 
I'll try to be quick. This doesn't actually matter. It's just a demonstration. I'm going to end up with a really ugly hand pose, but that's okay. That's actually not too bad looking. Except that the finger is going right through the trigger. There we go. Voila. Okay, that actually looks way better than I thought it would. Uh, okay, so there we go. We have our right hand posed, and now you think, oh no, now we have to pose the left hand by hand, and it's so horrible. But actually, look at these really nice buttons that I made that say copy pose from right to left. I press that, and boom, we have our symmetrized left-hand pose, in case there are any horrible people that are left-handed that need to play my game. Um, yeah, so there we have our right hand and our left hand poses. Now the next thing to do is, um, it would be really nice if when you pulled the trigger in real life the finger would move, but with this static pose there's no way to do that. But if we make a third pose, um, and we will reset the secondary pose, or I guess a secondary pose, because the main pose is just a symmetrical left and right part. Uh, we build the secondary pose that will... Uh, this could be something else if it wasn't a gun, it could be like squeezing an object, a squishy object, or I don't know, lifting up a finger or anything. It'd be really nice if there were like, you could do an unlimited number of poses. Right now I'm just supporting two, because that's all I need for these weapons. Uh, but anyway, for the second pose, I'll just reel in the index finger a little bit. And now we can compare them if we enable the oops, right hand and secondary pose right there. And the secondary pose actually gets mirrored automatically, so um, it just assumes that you want to mirror it. Uh, the reason I keep the left and right hand poses separate is in case you have an asymmetrical object that you want to hold on to and you want different poses, but yeah. Okay, so we have all three poses set up. There they are, all overlapping and looking horrible. Um, and what we have to do next is click this button, Bake All Joint Data. Because having a ton of empty objects in your Unity scene is actually not so great, because it has to update their transforms all the time, um, I just bake it into uh, arrays of vectors and quaternions. So it saves all the, the skeleton poses, but it actually gets rid of this all these um, skeleton game objects as soon as the game starts playing. Um, so there we go, we have that. We will now, in the revolver script, we assign this hand pose overrider um, as the skeleton override so it knows the trigger to animate and it also sets it when you equip that gun. Um, so there we go, we have our revolver main pose set up. And I was thinking I would do the secondary pose, but that took me a really long time to do that first pose, so I'll just uh, show you this one. Or not the secondary pose, but the left hand pose, because you can um, grab guns with two hands at vertigo too. Um, anyway, let's just try this out in VR. And you probably won't be able to hear me very well in VR, so because I'm going to be away from my microphone, but I will try to show you as best I can what's going on. Actually, I will stand near my microphone and talk. That'll be good. Look at that finger tracking. There's been some firmware updates recently that have really vastly improved Knuckles even more than uh, what it was at. Super high fidelity there. Come on, right hand, I need tracking. Some oh, tracking! 
Okay, all right. Um, so we can switch the revolver and look at that. Perfectly animated hand pose. And you see it blends smoothly into it as I equip the gun. Super nice. And there it is, lurping in between our two uh, defined poses. And of course we can load up the gun, take a couple shots, take a couple bad shots. And I can hold on with the other hand, I think, and it, <laughs> I'm technically holding on to it and stabilizing it. Um, but I don't have the hand pose set up, so it doesn't display it. Uh, I do have the hand pose set up for the ionizer, the main pistol that you get. And you can see I get a really nice uh, my interaction code. I have to rewrite all my interaction code, it's really janky. I don't know why, it, why is it just letting go after a moment? Okay. Gun! Oh. Again, apologies for the, the tracking. It's a nightmare down here. There we go. Yep, so really nice um, two-handed grip, and that is the real hand, it's not duplicating the hand, it's just moving the skeleton to that position, which is super cool. And the controller is actually still updating in space, it just, um, right before rendering the hand, it moves the, the skeleton to the, the gripping spot. So any kind of stuff I have on the hand, like particle, particle effects, different textures, anything, will all just automatically follow this hand to this new pose, which is super convenient. Um, yeah, so that is my little system for animating hands grabbing onto stuff. Uh, let me know what you think. As far as I know, nothing like this um, in this level of convenience has been done before. It's All developers have just relied on animations. Um, but yeah, this is super nice and way faster than trying to make animations and again, put them through the whole Unity animator controller system. Um, yep, that, that's all there is to it. I will be going through the rest of my guns and supporting, um, adding support for this to them. And the quality of hands in Vertigo 2 is about to go way up. Not really. The quality of developing for hands in Vertigo 2 is about to go way up, though. And that's all I care about. It's how easy my life is. Alright, goodbye. <laughs>